Hey guys, hey, it is your girl, Soul Fashion Week TV, in the place to be, and welcome, welcome back to the channel, loved ones. <laughs> okay, I'm smiling, but this is going to be a story time video, guys, so speech impediment all up in this mouth because I have a bite plate currently placed, so I'm going to take the bite plate out right now. This is the bite plate that I have to keep in my mouth 24 seven and only take out to eat and drink. But because I'm a YouTuber and you need to understand what I'm saying to you, I'm gonna take it out just temporarily and then I'll put it back and then stay tuned for my next braces update video where I'll be talking about bite plate. So in today's video, loved ones, we are going to be talking about how not to allow uh, your feelings and emotions to dictate how much you eat. So um, today, or earlier today, I should say, because right now it is about, it is 4.45 in the p.m. And uh, today is Monday, happy Monday. Um, it actually started yesterday and it carried into today. And it kind of sabotaged my eating. And so I wanted to talk about it because, you know, when you struggle with your weight, a lot of times there are underlying triggers and things that are going on uh, that contribute to your downfall uh, when you're on a journey to uh, becoming more healthy. So being a, I am a married single mother, which means that although I do have a husband and my husband, he plays an, in an intricate role in my children's life, um, they know that he's not their father. So I'm still kind of a married single mom, uh, so to speak, because they're older and it, it's just different. I'm the primary caregiver. I take most of the responsibility for my children. So yesterday um, I had scheduled an appointment, a therapy appointment for um, my younger son. Uh, because he was diagnosed with ADHD and with him transitioning from middle school to high school it's been a bit of a rough transition he's had some stress around that and so I wanted to um, to get him into like a weekly therapy program to kind of aid and assist him on this journey through high school and I want to get ahead of it um, you know sooner rather than later because you know he's displaying some behaviors um, that require some assistance and so as a mother who cares about her child, it is my top priority to make sure that he gets the care that he needs um, to be successful and to get through high school. And so I have made some calls and I got an appointment uh, for yesterday at 5 p.m. Uh, so I got the email from, uh, from the office. I filled out all of the paperwork. I was ready to go. And I was planning to leave at like 3.30 ish so that that would allow me enough time um, to get to the appointment by five o'clock you know, and because he has ADHD um, in case I have to look for him because sometimes he veers off he doesn't come straight home things like that so as a parent of someone who has ADHD you have to make sure that you plan ahead because anything can happen you just don't know um, so with all of that being said I had planned to leave around 3.30 um, from work but I got a phone call from one of my, from a coworker by this individual keeping me on the phone. It kind of put me um, behind with leaving the office on at the time that I intended to leave. And so, you know, I, I left at four o'clock, which now I know it was going to put me way, way behind. And when I got in the car and got on the road, there was just so much traffic. There was no way that I was going to be able to make that appointment. And so I had immediately just become so overwhelmed and angry because, you know, it makes me feel as a parent, it makes me feel like a failure because I let this person um, like distract me and keep me on the phone way beyond the time that I needed to, um, you know, I needed to cut work off at a certain time to be able to make that appointment. and. The person called me and completely distracted the car and I told them that I needed to get off of the phone with them because I had to take my son to his appointment and we ended up missing the appointment. 
And so that really put me in a very, very bad mood. It put me in such a bad, bad mood um, because my son needs this. And, you know, I feel like through the years that, you know, working this job has affected my ability to be able to parent effectively because there's always something getting in the way that has to do with a job. And so I have to um, figure that out but I let my emotions get the best of me with that. And so um, today I just decided that I needed to take a day to get my mental health in check, you know, and to figure out my plan of action as it relates to my child and being able to help him and to be able uh, to continue to be productive at work while I'm there. Um, so I was just trying to, I just needed to figure out a whole lot of things and First thing this morning, I get a text um, from my neighbor. So, um, as you guys know, my husband and I, we purchased this home. And it's coming up on four years that we've been here now. So, we purchased this home four years ago. And um, we moved into an area where um, it's kind of like a close-knit block. All, the, all of the people um, around in this little cul-de-sac or court area um, they've lived around here for a very long time they're older people they don't have uh, younger children um, with the exception of the neighbor that lives right next door to me that recently had a small child but there are no really no children that live like in the immediate vicinity like you know right here within I would say six six or so houses there are really no little little kids so it's really older people and they keep to themselves and all of that um the neighbor uh to the right of me uh she put up a property she uh, tried to establish a property line so we don't jive like that because she put up some little jag some little rickety little like garden fences to kind of a, like establish a property line as if we don't know where our property ends and hers begins but that happened the neighbor on the opposite side uh which has always been pretty cordial um she sends me a text um this morning and she asked uh she asked me if i knew whose car was parked in front of her door so now so for the most part there's not much of anything that goes on around here it's not a busy street because there are only older people that really live around here so um, she says that there is a car blocking her driveway. So I asked my husband, could he look out the window and see if there was a car that was blocking her driveway? And so he was like, no, the, it's the tiniest bit. Um, you know, if she can drive, she can get out of her driveway. But the car was in no way blocking her driveway. It was blocking her walkway. So if she came down her walkway, um, you know, the walk, the path, which that's the, that would hold true for anyone that lives on our court because there's no sidewalk. So if someone parks in front of your door, your walkway is blocked. But we don't use the walkway because everyone on this street has a driveway. So And she doesn't use her walkway or whatever. So he said her driveway is not blocked. It's just like because you're parked in front of the door, her walkway is, is blocked. So um, I said, is that Khalil out, out there? Khalil is my oldest son. And so he said yeah he's 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 out there and so I said well could you just tell him to move you know to, to have his friend move um their car from in front of her door because you know so I told her I don't know whose car it is but I definitely know that it's someone who my who my son is familiar with because he's out there with them so I said um you know I'll have them move the car um in front of my door or whatever and you know I'll figure out what all that's about because I don't want them inconveniencing you in any way so excuse me my son and the young lady um they go around the block or they go to get bagels or something because she was actually taking my son into work she was dropping him off at work so that's why she was out there but when the neighbor texted me I um had my younger son go out there and tell them to move their move the car they move the car but apparently the neighbor also called the police and said that there was a suspicious car that had been outside her house for two days. And so when my son and the young lady went around the block, as they were coming back around, the cops pulled them over 
and the young lady had a ticket um an outstanding ticket or a warrant or something in another city so they took her in and they left her car there uh but you know the cops had my son held up you know down the street from our house and it, it just wasn't a it the scene didn't look good because they ended up taking the young lady i mean they let her they literally took her for 15 minutes let her go or whatever but it was just the whole idea because the neighbor had reached out to me i told her that i would have the car moved and i would tell them not to park in front of her door and she called the police and so that really ticked me off because when the police came around and and came to the vehicle they said the reason why they were stopping them is because the car fit the description um th that they received a call on or they received a complaint saying that the car was parked in front of someone's door which is essentially the same thing that this lady texted me and no more than 10 minutes after she texted me and i told her that i would have the car moved here comes the police so you have to so at this point i'm really really upset because you know in this day and age when you think about involving the police in situations where things just can be settled um, well really this wasn't an issue that even warranted um making a complaint to the police because all the young lady was doing was picking my son up to take him to work and so it it just didn't even warrant that period point blank and so you know now she's over in her house and she's not dealing with any of this because she's home she's in her house and she's safe and me as a mother I'm worried about the fact that you know the cops have my son held up and I don't know what they're going to do and he they weren't doing anything this type of thing it just the situation itself just pissed me off to no end because I know how the people are around here and I know that I shouldn't let that dictate how um I have visitors and stuff or how I allow my children to have company but when you when you live in a society where especially when you're raising sons and you live in a society where the legal system doesn't doesn't work in their favor sometimes you have to move a lot differently than you would if you were um if you were a different color let me just say that so i i don't want to i don't want to offend anybody because that's not that's not what i'm here to do um you know i love everybody and i love all people so you know sometimes my spirit doesn't my spirit just recognizes when people are are doing evil things and i don't know why it always seems that I don't know it's like if you have a light that is shining just a little bit brighter than someone else it doesn't matter what how much you don't have so let me just say it like this so it doesn't really sometimes you can think that you are in the worst situation or you're in a situation where you feel like you like there's so much area for improvement but the people around you are watching you and they're on the outside looking in and they don't know what you may be facing or what issues you may be going through but just the fact that there is a ray of sunshine that is always surrounding you it bothers people it really bothers people and because my spirit doesn't resonate with the people around here i mean we purchased this home we love this home and we're not going to allow um the ignorance of these people to run us away um but it's just really really sad when you know you move into a neighborhood and people are not welcoming just because just because they um they're not willing to accept change if my spirit doesn't align with how you are i can't deal with you i'm sorry i just can't um because i have allowed that to plague me for so many years and a lot of that heavy old weight that was weighing me down in my life a lot of it had to do with other people's junk that I was taking on to myself. So I absolutely refuse to take on other people's junk. And it appears to me that these people around here have a lot of junk with them. And I don't want to be involved at all. 
um, because as new neighbors come in, I, I would like to be welcoming to them and I don't want them to think that I am a part of all the negativity that goes on with these cliques around here. I, I don't do cliques. I always been separate from that and just because I live in this little doesn't mean that I have to uh, to take part in that. So yeah, it was just, I just felt like my, my, um, my spirit was being challenged um, yesterday by, you know, in the office and also um, around here in this neighborhood as it relates to my children. I, I, I don't even know what you call it, but it, it bothered me a lot and it got my emotions flared up and I allowed that to kind of dictate the way I ate. Now I didn't eat bad, but I found myself grazing on food uh, when I wasn't hungry. And so that's why I figured that I would sit down and um, and just talk it through. You know, I've already explained to my son, like I said, thankfully the young lady was able to, they let her go. They gave her a um, a paper so that if she should get pulled over while she's driving around or whatever, she'll be able to present this paper. She has to go to court tomorrow and just pay, a, I believe it's like a parking ticket or something. And then she's basically off the hook, which I mean, it's maybe a blessing in disguise because you don't want to be out here driving and to get pulled over and to find yourself locked up in um, some of these counties in New Jersey. It just so happens that we live in a more suburban area and it's the crime rate is not really all that high. So the cops around here, they don't really have a lot to do. It's pretty laid back. And so they didn't even take her car. They allowed my son to drive her car and park it in front of my door which if your per the purpose and intent was of you calling the cops was that you didn't want the car on the block well that failed because there were there was no reason for them to take the car and um so the car ended up being out here on the block anyway so whatever you called yourself trying to do you didn't succeed at it because the car had ended up being out here maybe two more hours on the block because what you did yeah. i'm so glad that the young lady was able to get or that she's going to get the whole thing straightened out and that she can, can she can drive her car with peace of mind not having to worry about you know people um bothering her but you know the audacity of this woman and then she has the nerve to say that um there's been a lot of strange cars um around on the block lately well why are you telling me that because i i mind the business that pays me so there's no reason for you to tell me that because I don't understand why people are so invested in minding other people's business instead of just tending to their own. There was no reason for that woman to call the police on two young adults that were just outside not doing anything. To me, that's like making a false complaint. And then I have the text messages basically just of our conversation. So if me as your neighbor, I responded to you immediately and I told my son to have his friend to move the car and then before they could even make it around the block successfully, the cops were on them, hot on their trail saying that they received a complaint. Who does that? You know, that could have went a whole nother way. And meanwhile, you're sitting in your home without a care in the world and these two young 22 year old people that were doing nothing wrong are now having to be pulled over and questioned by the police for doing absolutely nothing. Like that boils my blood to the point of no return. Right. And maybe she doesn't, she doesn't know what it's like to walk a day in the, in the shoes of an African American male. She's Indian. Um, so maybe she doesn't know what that feels like, but she's a minority, so she should know. And so that just made my blood boil to no end because people can have visitors. We have a lot of neighbors around here. They have parties and all of that. So when you say strange cars, what exactly do you mean by strange cars? Any car that is not around here every single day is a strange car. So are, are you calling the police on everybody that has a visitor? That's strange that's really strange so yeah I'm, I'm saying all of that to say guys that you know the ways of this world are getting worse and worse as we as we go by each day and I even on this weight loss journey where I'm constantly reflecting on 
um, my life and the things that have plagued me for years and years and years. And this is a daily battle. You know, you can be up one day and down the next. So where I have been pretty well, I'm three years out now. And um, yeah, I just made three years on October 3rd, just a couple of days ago. And my starting weight on this journey was 215 pounds. And right now I'm sitting at 126.2 pounds. My lowest weight on this journey was at my two year mark, which was 122, I believe 0.1 pound. Um, and so right now I'm sitting at a comf comfortable weight of 126. And today was a day that really, really challenged me on this journey and where I can really see myself uh, allowing my emotions to allow me to go off the rails. And so year three this is something that i'm gonna have to make sure that i am extremely extremely mindful of is just being able to control my emotions because there's in in this day and age you can't really do anything but allow people to be who they are and let the universe deal with them because by me going back and forth arguing with someone who is ignorant it doesn't pay it doesn't pay now that lady was five thousand percent wrong for what she did and the universe is going to deal with her so rather than allowing the my emotions to get the best of me i pray for, i pray for that woman and i hope that she sees the error of her ways and i hope that the next time she is faced with a situation that is not threatening <laughs> that she deals with it in a non-threatening way because now you know i don't even want to deal with her or any of the people that live around here and i don't plan on moving anytime soon so you know i i really do hope that she she finds the error in the way she handled that situation and um at some point she apologizes because that that's bad it's really really bad and um it's sad and so yeah i just i don't know i just wanted to come on here and just pour out because i'm still not feeling better this happened at like seven o'clock in the morning and my son is fine the young lady is fine all is good but i'm still feeling away about the situation and i know that I shouldn't I shouldn't allow this to to dictate my eating I shouldn't allow this to dictate how the rest of my evening is going to go I, I really had to take a day just a mental health day to just deal with yesterday and then it continues on today so I am making the choice as of right now to have a good rest of the day and I challenge you guys out there to do the same and so yeah don't allow your emotions to dictate your eating don't allow your emotions to dictate your day and don't allow the ignorance of people um, to dictate the way your life is going to go I love you guys I love you with all of my heart I thank you so much for supporting this channel and guess what I'll see you in the next video bye guys